all gifts is not made just to receive some gifts are made to receive and to give away this is one of those gifts that I want her to share come on up for tequila let's give God a hand for tequila They did not know tequila from Adam and Eve, but Sister Lisa, Brother Dion, that's Brother Dion's family, and she was battling. Mm. To the point of death. A lot of you don't know, some of you may. So I went to the hospital, which is something I don't really like to do a lot because it's just something about the hospital because I've dealt with so many of my close family members, mamas, sisters, aunties, grandmas that has crossed over from cancer. And it's something that just, I guess, so many torments me, Sharon, when I have to go to the hospital. For some reason, I don't know. I need some more root system healed. But I went and met with Tequila her mother sister Joyce was there and sometime after we sat and talked uh, when they became members of the church one of the things that Keela, Tequila I believe it was Tequila maybe it was Joyce said pastor didn't know us we weren't members of the church he came to the hospital sick and never once did he talk about them being members of the church? That spoke to Joyce and Tequila. I came inquiring about her. And I didn't even know yet. But I knew it had significant meanings to Dion and you, Lisa. How soon people forget what this one do. And has done. And will continue to do. Not because I was asked. It's just because the Spirit of God led me to. And she has came and she makes no apology about her worship, just like Sister Sharon. She has been through some battles. And I've taught her, you got to guard your healing. God has healed you and don't give your healing back to the enemy. A lot of us don't understand that. When God deliver you in any capacity of anything, you have to protect that because the enemy is coming back. And so that's why you got to keep your life clean after God healed you. And so God spoke in 3434. It turned on a light bulb. It reignited. And so I seen her on Facebook doing a video. So I, I think I had my heart near someone, I think it was, reach out to her and told her to take it down because I want the church to hear that. I want the church to be the first to hear that before everybody in the world heard it because it's a real story. This is a product, not a byproduct, but a product, Pastor, of fasting and praying. This took place at Going Hall for Christ Church. It is a memorial of the signs, miracles, and wonders, there's wonders that's taking place in this church. You just don't know it. There's many more of these out here. I just ain't pulled them and presented them yet. But I want her to share a little poem that she wrote. But it's really talking about her. And then we're going to move. And I'm going to bless you and get you ready for those that's going to do the auditions and so forth. But God bless you. First, I would like to give God all the honor, the praise, and glory for my story. Without him, I would be, I am nothing. I don't know where I would be without him on my side. I just thank him for where he's brought me from um, and where he's brought me to and what he has brought me through. Um, so my name is Tequila Danielle Arnett, and my name means I am a warrior protected by God, possessing supernatural Prophetic and healing abilities. Danielle means I am down to earth and serious minded. Arnett means I am powerful and complete. My purpose in life is to empower, encourage, and uplift all people who are dealing with internal bondage 
through love, fasting, and prayer in Jesus' name. My life languages are contemplator, responder, and shaper. And I would like to thank Going Hard for Christ for opening that door for me. So the name of my poem is um, Surviving the Chokehold of Cancer. They say fear haunts and pain hates. I say pain strengthens and fear drives faith. And I don't know all of the outcomes, don't know what happens tomorrow. But when that ocean of doubt comes, don't let me drown in my sorrow. And don't let me stay at the bottom. I feel like this hole is too deep to climb. See, I've been looking for a way out but I'll settle for a peace of mind, picking up the pieces of my life and hoping that I put together something right. Tell me all I got is all I need. Tell me you gonna help me stand and fight. I'll find you. Lyrics by Lecrae featuring Tori Kelly danced through my ears as now it came the time for me to face my fears. The doctor walked in and said, I'm sorry, but you have stage three breast cancer, invasive ductal carcinoma. I could never be prepared for that answer. And I'm like, how? How could I have been dealt these cards seeming to seal my fate? I've never had more than a common cold, plus I'm only 28. And three babies that rely on me? I felt like I had just been sentenced to death, and Satan was a jury. But now was not the time for me to focus on my problems. I had to prostrate myself before the only one who could solve them. So in the judge's chamber, I surrendered my soul. And up until now, I could only hope that my fruit was found good in the story being told. See, I was desperate for my healing, like the woman with the issue of blood. If only I could muster up my faith and believe. The cost had already been paid on Calvary with his love. The devil really wanted my life? Yeah, you could bet. But God stepped in and said, no, not yet. <laughs> Two hospital stays and losing my hair, watching my family stress, it just didn't seem fair. But every day was planned on purpose. And through the pain, I learned what worth is. Another day on earth by applying the verse. And each day remember, it could be worse. Attitude determines altitude. And a little bit of faith reverse the curse. I just wanted to thank God again because yesterday, June 8, 2019, made one year that I had been cancer free. So thank you, Lord. <laughs> See, the, the testimony or the poem or wouldn't have been complete until she stomped on the head and letting the enemy know that she's healed. I give God the glory for tequila. Let's give her a hand one more time. Go ahead and stand out of reverence to God's word. Sister Candy, you know I'm coming for you too. I welcome the gifts. When we both going off of Christ, we had poetry, we had miming, we had all kind of that stuff going on. So if you gifted in that aspect, my God, you see, uh, Sister Amber and him, and we're going to get you involved. That miming, that's so powerful. Face our blood, Minister Water used to go, oh, come on, somebody. I want all of it. I want all of it. There's many ways to share the gospel. My God, that was a gift that you just witnessed. Somebody at the point of stage three cancer, that's death. But God stepped in. Have it been a struggle? Have it been a fight? Yes, every day. But you got to keep pushing. You got to keep pushing. Job 42, starting in verse one, it says, I know that you can do anything. We just witnessed that. We just witnessed that. I know that you can do anything and no one can stop you. You ask, who is that question? Who asks? I mean, you ask, who is this that questioned my wisdom with such arrogance? It is I, and I was talking about things I knew nothing about. Things far too wonderful for me. You said, I listen and I will speak, God said. I have some questions for you and you must answer them. I had only heard about you before. 
but now I have seen you with my own eyes. Job said, I have only heard about you before. He said, now I, has, I see you, not in the physical sense, but I see you with my own eyes. Job is, Job is able now to make that declaration because of what he's been through. Come on, y'all. Y'all stay with me. Yeah. Stay with me. He said, I know you now. And I know you because of the things I've went through. That's why I know you. Even though I ain't never seen you in the flesh. But I know you because of things that you have brought me through and how you sustained me and what should have took me out, didn't take me out. I know you now. See, God is trying to, for some of us, my God, he already done me like this. That's why my passion gets crazy sometimes, because I just seen God move. I know him, my God, to be a miracle worker and a healer, my God. But God is trying to reveal himself to you by the things you are going through. I just showed it to you in the scripture. We talking about Job. Everybody associate Job with suffering. True that. But at the end of the day, Job, you would think that Job already knew God. He said, now I know you. Now I've seen you. And you think about his story because of things that he's been through. Let God speak to you through what you're going through. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let God reveal himself to you by what you're going through. Amen. Don't run from it. Don't abort the process as we teach over her. Job said in verse 5, my God of 42, he said, I had only heard about you before, but now I have seen you with my own eyes. And I take back everything I said, and I, and, 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 and I sit in dust and ashes and show my repentance. I'm going to stop right there. Father, thank you for the few minutes. Take a trip with us down memory lane. Let me adopt a principle from Brother Joseph who preached this past. Wednesday as we tell the story leading up to breakthroughs and turnarounds and so forth we thank you for the people of God and all that you have said and done already this is just icing on the cake Father God hide me behind the cross as you teach your people Father God we thank you in Jesus name we pray come on and say amen, amen. this is the continuation you may be seated of last Sunday, some of you was here and some of you were not. I want to encourage each and every one of you to subscribe as April will get on me. My God, please make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube page. Please subscribe to our YouTube page and take some videos and so forth and share them with your friends. Because some of your friends and loved ones is at different churches and so forth. But you know some of the things they're going through. And you can look at some of the sermons that has been preached here on Sundays and Wednesdays. And you can begin to share that with your friends. My God, because all it takes is one word from the throne of heaven to help somebody. Do I got a witness out there? So I want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube page, my God. Uh, as I told you last week, and I'm going to cut this and chop this up, my God, so I pray that Pastor Tedrick and my leaders is looking and watch how God stand up on his feet, my God, in a short time. Come on, somebody. <laughs> uh, do you ever just wonder, as I told you last week, uh, do you ever just want more? How many of y'all want some more? Okay, we, we know that. And then, of course, I told y'all we live in a society that thrives Oh, my God, look at the word thrives on more. Uh, we associate, my God, godliness with more stuff, which is not true. Mm. Uh, we associate being effective, Sister Sharon, with being busy, which is not true. Because you can be busy and still be ineffective and unproductive and unfruitful. Come on, somebody. So busy because we are busy and we multitasking, per se, my God, don't mean you're being effective. Because anytime you are super busy and I'm talking to myself, there is something that will die. Because anything left unattended turns to what? And so, therefore, it ain't good to be busy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Some people need to be busy. They feel like they have to be busy because it keeps them from really sitting and coming face to face with the internal stuff that's going on on the inside. So we got to keep a lot of noise. We got to keep a lot of stuff going on because if we ever get quiet, we allow to. Hmm. And so last week, started at point number one, I put on the, the title of the sermon is, I, I need more. We do need more, but we don't need more stuff. We need more spirituality. We need more holiness. We need more love. We need to learn how to forgive. 
we need to learn how to truly love as we took communion and kingdom foundation this morning and pastor dean taught on communion and, and the importance my god of communion my god with flesh and blood meaning people in the body and also communion my god uh, uh, going more deep in intimacy with god and then we all had to get up my god and tell each other three people that we love them and, and i've seen all the people giving each other kisses and so forth you know my daughter's kind of like pastor uh, I leaned over and said, she kissed her, her daddy. <laughs> you know, but when me and the wife be trying to kiss him, like, y'all stop it. And she went, oh, let's stop. But I seen different men, and Brother Cherry and so forth, different men loving and embracing each other. Just so good. That's what God, he, that's how he meant it to be, Brandon. Right. The body of Christ should have an aroma and a love. He said, it's not about how good you preach, as Pastor said. It's not, it's not, not how many tongues and all that stuff. My God, they would know you are my disciples, Pastor, tells you about the love. We got to get back to that. Oh, we got to get back to that. And fasting helps us bring all this flesh under submission. Make our truth be told. That's all we really got. Faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is you can have great faith, but if you ain't got no love, it's according to the kingdom. Oh, my God. Love. We need to ask God to increase our love walk. We really do. And so the pathway to more, as I said, is not accumulating stuff. Uh, my God, uh, uh, you have to begin to ask God to position you spiritually. So point number one was that, was the pathway to more, my God, was, was holiness and, and, and honesty and humility, my God. I had to be honest. As I told the church, my God, I had a very important meeting this past Wednesday, and I felt like doing some things different, my God. But thank God for the people that loved me that was in that meeting, my God, that made me think after I left that meeting, which was my wife, Madeline, Dean and Kim, which as many of y'all love, else love me, but I had to make some decisions, and I had to make them real quick, because guess what, if, if the decision I made, it affected y'all, y'all yeah. yeah, don't know what I go through, yeah. and so why did I say that, because you have to be honest with yourself, and you got to be honest where you at in life, yeah. you can't uncover until you get honest with yourself, I taught y'all that last week, come on somebody, so we got to be honest, uh, and one of the things, my God, when I see the people coming down and uh, laying out before the Lord and so forth, my God, uh, uh, somebody's getting honest. Come on, y'all stay with me. Somebody's getting honest. My, everybody ain't coming down here going through the motions. Everybody ain't down there playing. Uh, somebody, my God, oh, I had Shemaine take a picture of you, my God, because I want that picture when you were just laid out like that. It was symbolic. And I had Shemaine, what's Shemaine? She had sent that picture to you, but it was like you was on the cross. Please make sure you send that picture to us, Shemaine. It was like he was laying out. I saw Jesus. I said, man, get that. It's like it was Jesus. Why right her? Mm. Why right her? In the midst of us. And you look at how God moved. Oh, Toya, Tasha, y'all look how God moved. My God, it's like Jesus. Why right her? In the center of this sanctuary. Oh, my God, it was so beautiful. Thank you for not being afraid to prostrate yourself in the presence of the Lord. When the woman of God was saying, I need more, my God, she laid out there, my God, like she was on the cross. My God, I might have that on the screen next Sunday. Don't be ashamed, my God. So let's go straight to point two. If you want to catch up on point one, do so. I encourage you to. But there's a price to needing more. <laughs> Are you willing to pay the price for more? How many of y'all say y'all want more? How many say y'all need more? Ask yourself now, are you willing to pay the price? Yeah. Write this first thing down. Agony is payable upon entry agony is payable payable upon entry look at the agony Janice that Jesus had to go through before he entered into his glory <laughs> ah uh, look at the agony Christian that our Lord and Savior that we just sung and worship had to go through before he entered William into his glory there's a glory that is awaiting everybody under the sound of my voice. Some of our glories look the same, but they're not the same. There's different roads, there's different pathways, there's different situations and circumstances, what have we, that God got to take you on, on your pathway, on your way to glory. There's things, my God, called defining moments, and you dealing with one right now, my God. And God is looking at how we handle those defining moments in our life. We can, uh, a defining moment, my God, will credit you or discredit you. A defining moment, my God, will propel you to your next or you'll be stuck in seven more years of famine and lack. Uh, defining moments, my God, don't tell you when they're coming. 
defining moments just show up out of nowhere. And then you and I got a decision to make at that time, right then. And remember, my God, every leader that's in any form of leadership, you're going to have defining moments, my God, where it's going to either make people follow you or get away from you by how you handle that defining moment. So there's a price to more. You got to ask yourself, my God, and do a self-evaluation. We got to ask ourselves and do a self-evaluation. I need more and I want more, but what is my motive behind needing and wanting more? So when we raise our hand and say, I need more and I want more, my God, then we got to ask ourselves, because see, you got to talk to yourself. I don't know about nobody else, Anthony, but I'll talk and answer myself. Oh, my God. And so therefore, uh, I, I can say, God, I need more and I want more. And I, I want a better job and I want this, this, this. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. It's kind of like Satan and Isaiah. I, 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 I. I can do it better than you, God. See what I'm trying to say? So therefore, you got to ask yourself, my God, you want more, but I, what are you doing with what he already gave you? So ask yourself and myself, are we disqualifying ourselves from more? That's the natural side of what I'm talking about. Now you got to begin to bring it up spiritually, my God. Are you willing to pay the price spiritually for what you want? Because a lot of your next in the natural, a lot of your more, listen to me, y'all, in the natural has everything to do with what you're doing in the spiritual realm. Boy, y'all better come on, y'all, y'all. Y'all, y'all, y'all come on up right here. A lot of things you want in the natural is contingent and connected yes. to what you're doing in the spiritual realm. Yes. Also, what you're not doing. So you can't increase because you're not increasing spiritually. Yeah. Because that way, if God gives it to you naturally and you can't handle it spiritually, it's going to destroy you, not help you, or not bless you. Price got to be paid. Five minute devotion and two minute prayers and could come into church when you want to and, and fast and if you choose to. The pastor of the church called for a corporate fast. Whether you are able to come to pray or not, my God, you should be in us. Okay, I'm a member of this church. I need my commanded blessing that's on the church. And so therefore, I'm getting into this fast. Yeah. You determine your increase. I taught you that, not God. You determine, I determine how blessed you will be. If you want increase, you determine that, not God. Don't lock God's hands. Don't lock him up, my God. You determine by what you do or what you don't do. Obedience is better than sacrifice. See what I'm trying to say? And so I don't know about y'all, but uh, uh, I need some more spiritually, not necessarily naturally. Uh, We can always say we need more money. Everybody can say that. Uh, But I need some more anointing. I need some more humbling. I need some more breaking. See, y'all not willing to take those type of steps and make those type of declarations, but I know where I'm going, so it's going to require more breaking. I know what it's going to look like. My God's going to require a greater and stronger anointing. And so, therefore, in order to get that, my God, my, my agony is going to lead to my entry. That what I'm praying for in private, my God, requires a crushing, requires a breaking, uh, requires that you taught us two or three weeks ago that God put his hands on us. Oh, my God, if you want more, you got to let God put his hands on you. You got to let God disrupt, my God, your pattern of thinking. You got to let God come in, my God, and tear down like he did Job, my God. Before he gave Job everything, he took everything. I can't get no. Uh, Y'all can pay for my mahogany mistake later on. Come on, somebody. And so more isn't cheap. Increase isn't cheap. The price involved the loss. In the story, to keep it in context, uh, Joseph, I'm referring to him, I heard you kind of convicted of it because Pastor Chaplin Joseph said, Pastor, he's a great storyteller. You told that story and laid that out there, man of God. Oh, my God, I got to get better at telling stories, not lying, but telling the story of the context of the scripture. Oh, <laughs> uh, my God. Joseph, go look at Joseph. He's out there on the way up to, my God, go look at him. But the price involved loss. See, we don't understand that. Y'all stay with me now. Let me give y'all this. My God, no time has got me. But in order to increase, you got to lose something. In order to have more, Barry, he got to take something. If you understand the story, my God, he took everything. After he gave it to Joseph, I mean, Job, he took it from him. The Bible says, write this down, Pastor. God give it and God take it away. See, sometimes God will remove things from you to see if your pursuit going to increase. He, uh, uh, he, he will remove it, my God, to see if you're going to isolate yourself. If you're going to become unfaithful with the little substance that's left. 
So you transitions, I'm going to help you, my God. You transition, I'm speaking to a lot of you, my God. And some of you receiving, my God, different type of employment and stuff like that, my God. Will you be faithful with that, though? Even though it's not the same as your old paycheck. See, there's always tests before promotion. Oh, uh, my God, we need more, we want more, my God, but we got to pass the test. That's why the scripture says don't despise small beginnings. Oh, my God, as I've taught y'all, my God, storms locate your faith. It's easy to sow, my God, when you got it, but can you sow when he didn't took it? Can you be faithful with 10 like you can 10,000? I'll be faithful when I get 10,000. Some of us can't even be faithful with 10, but we just say that we want more. Because when you think of more, we usually think in the body of Christ of more stuff. Not more spirituality. Not more what God calls for holiness. Honesty. Truthfulness. Oh my God. God said he desires truth in the inward parts. Uh, being honest and uh, more so God can go way down uh, into the root system and heal. Mm. Coming face to face. So the price to more is not cheap. We think, write this down up on the point number two. The price of, is of less stuff. Write this down. The price is less stuff. The price is less stuff. Thank you, Lord. Job lost everything he valued, y'all, in life. His finances, his family, his health, his friends, and most of us are in the business of increasing stuff. But God took everything, finances, family, health, and friends, church. We are into accumulating because especially in the scripture days, they associated righteousness, described the Pharisees with how good they look and how much stuff they had. Don't you know in the Bible days, my God, uh, uh, the, the more land you had, the more power you had. See, if you was a king over a domain and you had small land and, uh, uh, and Pastor Champ was a king over a domain and he had 200 acres and I only had one acre, Champ continued to look down on me because I have small land. Land represents power. And so when you accumulated a lot of land, my God, you spoke to the surrounding kings, my God, that you are powerful. And they said, well, I better reconsider going over there and messing around with him because he got a lot of power. So increase in the natural consists of having a lot of stuff in the scripture days, a lot of land. Are y'all with me so far? Okay? And so therefore, but in God's kingdom, when God is trying to bless you, my God, because when you have a lot of stuff, my God, remember what I said? We tend to value the stuff. We, put a, we, we tend to put more emphasis on the stuff that we have. And when we got so much stuff, guess what it becomes? An idol. Yeah. And so therefore, God in his word says he's hate idols. And so he said, okay, if, if I continue to allow them to increase, I stay with me now, if I continue to allow them to increase, my God, they will never give me full devotion. Yes, yes. See, the, 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 the David said, give me an undivided heart. Uh, and also give me undivided loyalty. And so when you have a lot of stuff, my God, we tend to put value on the stuff more than God who gave us the stuff. Yeah, 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 that's real. That's real. When we have a lot of stuff, Redundant, we tend to put more value on the stuff more than the God who gave us the stuff. Right. Scripture, they said, don't worship the created thing, Paul said in Romans. Don't worship, Brother Cherry, the created thing. He said, but worship the creator of the thing. See, don't let your devotion shift as God begin to increase you. When God begin to bless you with your mantle, now I'm finna go spiritual. When God begin to open up the heavens, begin to, to push you into your purpose and push you into your calling, my God, as Bishop would say, stay small in your own eyes. Yeah. Oh, my God, come on, somebody. When God begin to set that mantle on you, my God, and he begin to promote you, my God, oh, my God, steps from the bottom to the top, when you start going up that ladder of success in the spiritual realm, and now people are serving you, my God. Now people want to do anything for you, my God. Now people want to take you out to dinner and feed you and all those type of stuff. You know where it goes when you promote it. My God, don't let that stuff, my God, interfere with your devotion to God. Can you stay hungry when God promotes you? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Can you stay hungry? Oh, my God. Will, will, will you continue to love God like you love God now? Will your pursuit shift if God give you 25 an hour instead of 12 an hour? There's a price to more. Naturally and spiritually. And most people at the day and time don't want to pay it. 
I was in conversation yesterday at the home going, my God, and one of the brothers said something to me, and I won't call no names, stuff like that, my God. But, but, but yeah, one thing they said, him and this significant other said, one thing I noticed about going over Christ, you make room for the spirit, and where I come from, they quench the spirit. And I don't believe he was talking or she was talking bad about the ministry. He was just calling it like a T.I.E. And that's not putting one ministry up and taking down one ministry. I'm just giving you an example. My God, you got to make room, my God, for, for increase in the spiritual realm. Oh, my God, my God, you mean more to me than 30 minutes, my God, of a service because I got 18 services, my God. You need more to me, so it takes time for the Spirit of God to work down on your root system, my God, because I need you healthy so, God, when God bless you, you can handle the blessing. Instead of squandering away the blessing. So I take time to allow the Spirit of God to dig. I take time to allow God to confront you and I face to face. We need face to face encounters with God. So God can break us so he can make us. Oh, we need to quit wrestling with God like Jacob, my God. I'm going a, I'm to a wrestle with you. I ain't going to let you go till you bless me. Some of you need to hold on to the horns of the altar. You need to keep on pushing and keep on digging. And you got to make room for people to get healthy and hold and set free and deliver. Everything is on a time frame. I had one of the sisters over there at the repast say, how long is your service? I said, when God quit, I promised the God, I said, when God quit, I said, we don't quit the spirit over her. I could have three other sisters and show they may be here tonight. Then this morning, it was three other sisters. I said, because you may have to go, but those two sisters that's with you right there, they may need what we have. She said, I got it, Pastor. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. I said, okay. And I pushed. Why am I saying that? Because to increase spiritually, to increase spiritually, you got to do like you taught us in foundation. You got to sit. Yes. You got to sit with the Lord. Yes. You got to sit with the King. You got to learn how to bask in His presence. Yes. You got to learn how to silence and bring the flesh under submission to the Spirit. So when somebody make a statement about how long is the service, I understand that a lot of churches are doing an hour of service, and you know what I'm saying, five minutes of worship, and, and hurry up and give, and, 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 and let me preach the word in 10 minutes, and y'all get on out of there so I can get there. But I'm sorry. If that's what you need, this probably ain't your church for you. Right. But if you need God to dig, because no matter how high God take us in these, we're going to still need God to dig. No matter how much spirituality you got in you, on how gifted you operate, no matter how anointed you are, I promise you when you uncover, there's still some more work to be done. And so there's a price to more. And that's less stuff. So God just shifted. Y'all moving. The price to more is not accumulating stuff. Some of us need some stuff in the natural. There is some lack in the natural and certain resources and certain day-to-day -day, uh, 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 resources, my God. But then you have to ask yourself, uh, God promised me in the world that if I seek the kingdom, he's going to give me all this. Why is it I don't have all this? So now I got to look at, okay, why, where, am, where am I missing this thing at? I'm struggling to do this, and I can't buy diapers. I can't do this, and, and yet, but my hair and nails is... I got on J's and all that, but uh, you know what I'm saying? I, when I go to pay my bill, I'm giving half of it instead of paying all of it. If I, when it, if I would've got those J's, I could've paid my whole water bill. See, see, you got to trace this thing, baby. You got to trace it back to the root system of the cause of the problems that we're having in our life. But when you're being rushed, you know what I'm saying? Preach them happy and then send them on with no substance. Trace the thing back. Why am I struggling? What is going on? What decisions am I making? Am I, where am I dropping the ball at? Oh, where am I missing this thing? And my baby told me that just yesterday. Well, you're missing it right here. You're missing it right there. Go back and trace it. You need somebody to tell you the truth. I didn't like it, Pastor, but she told me anyhow. That's why I only got 10 people to clap, and I don't care. It's Bible. Because some of y'all don't want to be told the truth. Matthew 6, 19 says, don't store up treasures here on earth, y'all. What moths eat and the rust destroys them. And what thieves break in and steal. Verse 20 says, store up treasures, Jesus said. He said, don't put, it, don't put so much stock, don't put so much value here on earth. He said, store up your treasures in heaven. One of them, he said, he said, he said don't store treasures here on earth, that's down. That's the dirt. Ooh, God just gave it to me. Don't store treasure in earth. That's down. But then he shifts in verse 20. He says, store treasures in heaven. That's up. Because down here, it can be stolen. Up there, it can't be touched. Yeah. 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 Woo, 
Oh my God. The enemy can steal what you got down here, but he can't steal what's up in heaven. It's lock and seal. Oh my God. The kingdom got it locked. Come on, somebody. He got guarding angels to protect your treasure. In heaven, God got guarding angels to protect your treasure. Oh my God. When you give God your kids, he protects your kids. When he give them your mind, he protects your mind. Oh, can't nothing get to it when it's in heaven. Store up. He said, look up, look up, look up, look up. Also, let me give you this. God is showing you and I put more value on heavenly things than earthly things. So part of increasing is putting more value on spirituality than naturality. Number two, the price is less self. Less stuff and less self. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Job was humbled and humiliated. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Job 2, 8 to 10 says, Job scraped his skin with a piece of broken pottery. Lord, have mercy. As he sat among the ashes, his wife said to him, are you still trying to maintain your integrity? What I like about this story and this verse is, she said, are you still trying to maintain your integrity? She didn't say, are you still trying to do church? Are you still trying to read your Bible? Are you, are you going to six o'clock prayer? She said your integrity. Integrity sets you apart. <laughs> when you have integrity, my God, my God, it, 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 it positions you for the king to take notice of you. Because if you got integrity, watch this, y'all stay with me, please. He can trust you. With heaven's treasures. When you got integrity, he can trust you with heaven's treasures. Are you still, and this is coming from his significant other, trying to maintain your integrity? So because the man of God has integrity, she said, why don't you curse God and die? Because she didn't understand the suffering, the price that had to be paid for him to be richly blessed above every person in the land on the back end. He had to go through some suffering. Everything that he loved was taken from him. She didn't understand that. It mate tells me that her value, her self-esteem, her identity, will she drive? Will she stay? I'm Job's wife. And I'm also the richest queen in all other land. I can eat what I want to eat. I can drive what I want to drive. I can wear, I'm being serious, y'all, what I want to wear. And so now the very thing that her value was tied to is now taken from her. So what God has done, now he has put the squeeze on this princess. As soon as he put his hands on her, as soon as he allowed her to be, uh, uh, sharpened, uh, first thing she said, oh, you going to maintain your integrity? Well, what happened when you had cars and houses and you could pay your water bill and your kids was blessed and they graduated from college and they got good husbands and all the time, where, 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 where's that love for me at now, God is saying? Don't think she called God slipping because she didn't. I'm trying to take your stands, Joseph, and paint the picture. Where's your your devotion at now? Oh, you going to serve God? She said, why don't you curse the same God that she was just, I love God. Thank you, Jesus, because everything is good. Uh Oh, yeah, yeah. So, So that same lady that I'm describing, even though I'm describing a female, I'm describing male and female in her right now. I'm describing all of us right now. Come on, give me some volume, son. I'm describing all of us right now. She said, won't you curse God and die? My God, but Job, because he is a man of integrity, my God replied, you talk like a foolish woman. Boy, some of y'all say that, there's going to be a bomb in Gilead in your house. (laughs) Job understood, even in the midst, and keep in mind, as he make this declaration, I'm about to, as he make this declaration, he's not even the wealthiest man. At this time, he's making this declaration. He is sitting. Job 
It's like Jesus. They say they beat him. To where Jesus was so disfigured where they couldn't even recognize his human figure. Now here is Job sitting. Even his friends is around. And he is such turmoil. Keep in mind, Job was the richest man. He had everything. He was Bill Gates 80 times over. Real talk at this time. But now God is taking everything. And he's sitting. And he's rocking. And he looks around and there's broken pottery. I told my church this years ago in 2016. Broken stuff around him. And he is such turmoil where he looked for that which was broken. Grabbed it. And started soothing himself. Scratching. Because the pain was so intense. But he reached for that which was broken. He reached for that which is broken. I ain't got nothing. My kids is gone. My wife is trying to get me to sin against God. All my cattle is gone. My friends is calling me a hypocrite. They saying you surely done something to be going through this level of suffering. But there's all type of broken stuff. Now, if he was the richest man in his day, I'm pretty sure pastor wasn't nothing broken around him. You can't be having money like that and have broken furniture and broken chairs and broken flat tires. You, you, so you just don't operate like that when you operate like that. So now he's at a low point and things is out of order. Stuff is broken. So he began to reach for that which is broken. In his lowest state, The thing that's closest to him called and said, are you still trying to maintain your integrity? Why don't you curse God and die? And this same man that reached for all these broken pieces, so that stuff that's broken around you is still usable. Some of y'all, every one of us is broken, but we're still usable. Every one of us is broken, but we are still usable. And so he reached for broken stuff. When God took everything from him, I'm coming in, y'all. I wanted y'all to get that vivid picture. When God took everything from him, now keep in mind, boils and everything that hit Job. Job was in a bad place, y'all. Just like Jesus was in a bad place. And the thing that's closest to him, usually our wife has our hearts. If there's one thing that a woman can make you do, a woman can get you to ride with her. But Job said, you know what? Listen to it. Oh, foolish woman, you talk. Should we just accept only good from the hand of God and never accept anything bad? What you and I have to understand is that we got to get past the points where all we want to receive is good. When the Bible warns you all throughout the old as well as the new, Paul said, all those that desire to live godly shall suffer persecution. Jesus said, you're going to have troubles in this world. Be of good cheer. I have overcome. David said, it was good for me that I was afflicted. Troubling is all, trouble is always associated with increase. There's always warfare around effectiveness. Y'all better. <laughs> Please. There's always warfare around effectiveness. If ain't no effectiveness, devil ain't worried about it. Warfare is all around effectiveness. When the enemy has got a glimpse of your necks, Tori, he gonna send as much warfare to discourage, to derail, to get you and I to curse God and die. Some of us is not dying physically, because there's so much pain and so much turbulence and there's so much trials. There's so much stuff going on. We're dying spiritually. We have taken our gifts and set it down. Even though we show up, but we are no longer eternal yes. We're no longer really prostrating 
in God's presence. The enemy wants to break you and I. That's the natural side. But also, too, God got to allow the enemy. He got to allow life. He got to allow things or situations to break you. Because as I just showed y'all, spiritually, that what is broken is still usable. You got a broken pastor, but I'm still usable. When Job said, oh foolish woman, God had took it all. Can you man your, maintain your integrity when you're sleeping in your car? When your kid is in prison? When your wife is ready to leave? When your children cuss you out? See what I love about Mahogany Berry is that you could just talk and help God's people. Yes. Paint a picture for the people. Uncover to recover. Be honest. Because he knows. Don't hide behind the stilettos, as Pastor Francella would say. Don't hide behind the makeup. Don't hide behind all the gifts and things that you have done in ministry. Don't think that your marriage is the best marriage. Don't think that your kids is the best kids. Oh, my God. Don't think that everything is all together in your life because truth be told, we know how to cover up real good. And many of us able to present that facade when we got everything. But will you maintain your integrity when he take it all? Job was all the way broken in my closing. God had knocked him off of his high horse. I've been knocked off of my high horse many times, even as a pastor. But I ain't never lost my integrity to go hard for Christ. I promise you, as I've told many of y'all before, uh, me and Janice and First Lady was talking about this Friday. Not this verbiage, but the same, same content. You cut me open right now. Many of you take off and run. If he cut me open, all these souls inside of me. Many of you take off and run. If you seen the destiny that's connected to this church, you probably leave because guess what? It's a lot of suffering connected to this church. Why? Because it's a lot of warfare around something. That's effective. That's right. No matter who is saying what, who is doing what, there is people getting free, and the enemy wants you bound. <laughs> the enemy wants to keep you in prison. The enemy don't want you to press. The enemy don't want you to lay out. The enemy don't want them girls that I just seen come down here, my God, and lay out and cry out to the Lord. He don't want to see that. Uh, some places, they don't even allow you to have altar time. How can you take away the altar? Away from God's sheep. How can you take the altar, the very thing that can help them get free, the very thing that can cause the sheep to come and sacrifice on, you don't even allow them to come to it. Can't take away the altar. Play softly, man of God. You can't take the altar away from the sheep. Sometimes, Jared, it's all they got. It's not necessarily the preaching. It's being able to come to the altar. Because symbolically, some of us feel like if I get to the altar, I'm getting closer to God. And which is symbolically, you are. I don't care if you got to come a thousand times. But when you come, come with a mindset to sacrifice. Less of self. Less of self. God broke. Jacob, I mean Joseph, I mean Job, he broke Job before he made Job into the second half of his life. Many of us, there are stages where we have to be broken, but it's always propelling us, listen to me y'all, to increase. It's always propelling us to our next. 
You have to be willing to sacrifice that what is keeping you down and willing to accept what's going to prepare you up. And that what is going to take you up, upward, heavenward, you got to pay a price. It's going to cost you some being comfortable. You're going to have to stay up at night studying. As Joseph taught us this past Wednesday, you're going to have to get in a boat and go by yourself. Everybody can't fit in the boat. Though the boat fit 12, only one can go right now. Sometimes you got to go for make, be a trailblazer for the other 11 that's coming. Sometimes God got to launch you forward, Brian, and then he'll bring that what is connected to you behind you. You see what I'm trying to say? But don't despise the breaking. Don't despise the price to more. Which is not more stuff. Not more of self. Are y'all with me? But more of surrendering. I need more. Many of us right now, because we have made some mistakes, like we all have, need more stuff even in the natural. But if you trace it back, that stuff that's bringing you to the altar, that stuff that's hurting you, ask yourself, what, what is my role in that? How did I get here? How did I get her? I promise you, it ain't the church's fault. Nine out of ten times, it ain't your brother's or sister's fault. Nine out of ten times, it may not even be your supervisor's fault. Less self brings a different aroma in your home and in the church. Less self brings a different aroma on the job and in the church. Less self brings more peace in your home and in the church. The pathway to more is less self, less stuff, more spirituality. I'm Ceylon. I'm eating the filet mignon in the spirit. Less self leads to more. Decrease so that Christ can increase. Let it go. Sacrifice it on the altar. Don't render evil for evil. Transfer that what is on you. That what you are holding on to. That what God been telling you to let go. That what you've been trying to keep because you associated my God and put more value on that than you do on God. Let it go. Sometime God got to allow you and I to be humiliated in order to break you so that he can bless you. Oh my God. Sometimes God can allow you to be humiliated. God will allow you and I to be humiliated. Look at Job. Job was tending his business, Mr. Alvin, and the enemy was having a board meeting about Job. And Job was down there swinging his sword. He wasn't bothering nobody. Oh, my God, he was taking care of kingdom business, y'all. Listen to me. He wasn't bothering nobody. He wasn't in CND. And heaven was having a board meeting, and God released the enemy onto his life. There is warfare associated with effectiveness. You ask for more. Are you willing to be effective? Can you withstand the warfare? That's associated with your necks. <laughs> oh my God. Many of you have the calling of God on your life. You know it. And you got to be willing to sacrifice. Oh my God. I'm liking that flow right there. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Self. We got too much self, y'all. We got too much self. We got too much self. God's gonna break you. 
He's trying to warn us right now. The Bible said warning come before destruction. Don't let God, Joseph, have to take everything from us before we begin to sacrifice that what he's asking for. We got too much self. We got too much self. We got too much self. Too much self. 